Ephraim the Syrian classical Syriac, Marie Prim Sri Mar Ap, Rem Sir Yaya, classical Syriac pronunciation, Mr. A Rem Sir J. J. Coin Greek, Ephraim Ho Syros Latin, Ephraim Cyrus, also known as Saint Ephraim, Ephraim, or Ephraim, c. 306-373 was a Syriac Christian deacon and a prolific Syriac language hymnographer and theologian of the 4th century. Ephraim is especially beloved in the Syriac Orthodox Church, and counted as a venerable father i.e., a sainted monk in the Eastern Orthodox Church. His feast day is celebrated on 28 January and on the Saturday of the Venerable Fathers. He was declared a doctor of the Church in the Catholic Church in 1920. Ephraim wrote a wide variety of hymns, poems, and sermons in verse, as well as prose exegesis. These were works of practical theology for the edification of the Church in troubled times. So popular were his works, that, for centuries after his death, Christian authors wrote hundreds of pseudepigraphal works in his name. He has been called the most significant of all of the fathers of the Syriac-speaking Church tradition. Life Ephraim was born around the year 306 in the city of Nisibis now Nusabin in Turkey, in the contested border region between Sassanid Assyria and Roman Mesopotamia, then recently acquired by Rome. Internal evidence from Ephraim's hymenity suggests that both his parents were part of the growing Christian community in the city, although later hagiographers wrote that his father was a pagan priest. Numerous languages were spoken in the Nisibis of Ephraim's day, mostly dialects of Aramaic. The Christian community used the Syriac dialect. The culture included pagan religions, Judaism and early Christian sects. Jacob, the second bishop of Nisibis, was appointed in 308, and Ephraim grew up under his leadership of the community. Jacob of Nisibis is recorded as a signatory at the First Council of Nicaea in 325. Ephraim was baptized as a youth and almost certainly became a son of the covenant, an unusual form of Syriac proto-monasticism. Jacob appointed Ephraim as a teacher Syriac Malp, Anna, a title that still carries great respect for Syriac Christians. He was ordained as a deacon either at his baptism or later. He began to compose hymns and write biblical commentaries as part of his educational office. In his hymns, he sometimes refers to himself as a herdsman, Lena Lana, to his bishop as the shepherd, Rai Raya, and to his community as a fold, dear Deira. Ephraim is popularly credited as the founder of the school of Nisibis, which, in later centuries, was the center of learning of the Syriac Orthodox Church. In 337, Emperor Constantine I, who had legalized and promoted the practice of Christianity in the Roman Empire, died. Seizing on this opportunity, Shapur II of Persia began a series of attacks into Roman North Mesopotamia. Nisibis was besieged in 338, 346 and 350. During the first siege, Ephraim credits Bishop Jacob as defending the city with his prayers. In the third siege, of 350, Shapur rerouted the river Migdanius to undermine the walls of Nisibis. The Nisibines quickly repaired the walls while the Persian elephant cavalry became bogged down in the wet ground. Ephraim celebrated what he saw as the miraculous salvation of the city in a hymn that portrayed Nisibis as being like Noah's Ark, floating to safety on the flood. One important physical link to Ephraim's lifetime is the baptistry of Nisibis. The inscription tells that it was constructed under Bishop Vologizes in 359. In that year, Shapur attacked again. The cities around Nisibis were destroyed one by one, and their citizens killed or deported. Constantius II was unable to respond. The campaign of Julian in 363 ended with his death in battle. His army elected Jovian as the new emperor, and to rescue his army, he was forced to surrender Nisibis to Persia also in 363 and to permit the expulsion of the entire Christian population. Ephraim, with the others, went first to Amida Diyabakir, eventually settling in Edessa modern in 363. Ephraim, in his late fifties, applied himself to ministry in his new church and seems to have continued his work as a teacher, perhaps in the school of Edessa. Edessa had always been at the heart of the Syriac-speaking world, and the city was full of rival philosophies and religions. Ephraim comments that Orthodox Nicene Christians were simply called pollutions in Edessa, after a former bishop. Arians, Marcionites, Manichaeans, Bardasonites and various Gnostic sects proclaimed themselves as the true church. In this confusion, Ephraim wrote a great number of hymns defending Nicene Orthodoxy. 
A later Syriac writer, Jacob of Sarah, wrote that Ephraim rehearsed all female choirs to sing his hymns set to Syriac folk tunes in the Forum of Edessa. After a ten-year residency in Edessa, in his sixties, Ephraim succumbed to the plague as he ministered to its victims. The most reliable date for his death is 9 June 373. Topic. Writings Over 400 hymns composed by Ephraim still exist. Granted that some have been lost, Ephraim's productivity is not in doubt. The church historian Sozomen credits Ephraim with having written over three million lines. Ephraim combines in his writing a threefold heritage, he draws on the models and methods of early Rabbinic Judaism, he engages skillfully with Greek science and philosophy, and he delights in the Mesopotamian, Persian tradition of mystery symbolism. The most important of his works are his lyric, teaching hymns, Emdidirsh Madras. These hymns are full of rich, poetic imagery drawn from biblical sources, folk tradition, and other religions and philosophies. The madras are written in stanzas of syllabic verse and employ over fifty different metrical schemes. Each madrasa had its kala, kul a traditional tune identified by its opening line. All of these kale are now lost. It seems that Bardaisan and Mani composed madras, and Ephraim felt that the medium was a suitable tool to use against their claims. The madras are gathered into various hymn cycles. Each group has a title, Carmina Nisabina, on faith, on paradise, on virginity, against heresies. But some of these titles do not do justice to the entirety of the collection, for instance, only the first half of the Carmina Nisabina is about Nisibis. Each madrasa usually had a refrain, the night unita, which was repeated after each stanza. Later writers have suggested that the madras were sung by all women choirs with an accompanying lyre. Particularly influential were his hymns against heresies. Ephraim used these to warn his flock of the heresies that threatened to divide the early church. He lamented that the faithful were "...tossed to and fro and carried around with every wind of doctrine, by the cunning of men, by their craftiness and deceitful wiles." He devised hymns laden with doctrinal details to inoculate right-thinking Christians against heresies such as Docetism. The hymns against heresies employ colorful metaphors to describe the incarnation of Christ as fully human and divine. Ephraim asserts that Christ's unity of humanity and divinity represents peace, perfection, and salvation. In contrast, Docetism and other heresies sought to divide or reduce Christ's nature and, in doing so, rend and devalue Christ's followers with their false teachings. Ephraim also wrote verse homilies, Mmdinir Memra. These sermons in poetry are far fewer in number than the Madras. The Memra were written in a heptosyllabic couplets, pairs of lines of seven syllables each. The third category of Ephraim's writings is his prose work. He wrote a biblical commentary on the Diatessaron the single gospel harmony of the early Syriac church, the Syriac original of which was found in 1957. His commentary on Genesis and Exodus is an exegesis of Genesis and Exodus. Some fragments exist in Armenian of his commentaries on the Acts of the Apostles and Pauline Epistles. He also wrote refutations against Bardison, Mani, Marcion and others. Ephraim is attributed with writing hagiographies such as The Life of Saint Mary the Harlot, though this credit is called into question. Ephraim wrote exclusively in the Syriac language, but translations of his writings exist in classical Armenian, Coptic, Old Georgian, Koine Greek, and other languages. Some of his works are only extant in translation, particularly in Armenian. Syriac churches still use many of Ephraim's hymns as part of the annual cycle of worship. However, most of these liturgical hymns are edited and conflated versions of the originals. The most complete, critical text of authentic Ephraim was compiled between 1955 and 1979 by Dom Edmund Beck, OSB, as part of the Corpus Scriptorum Christianorum Orientalium. As chronologist, Saint Ephraim the Syrian has composed the history of the patriarchs and kings from the creation to the crucifixion of Christ, the Book of the Cave of Treasure, translated by W. Budge from the Syriac text of the British Museum MSs ad. 25875, published by the Religious Tract Society, 1927. Topic. Symbols and metaphors Ephraim's writings contain a rich variety of symbols and metaphors. 
Christopher Buck gives a summary of analysis of a selection of six key scenarios The Way, Robe of Glory, Sons and Daughters of the Covenant, Wedding Feast, Harrowing of Hell, Noah's Ark, Mariner, and six root metaphors Physician, Medicine of Life, Mirror, Pearl, Tree of Life, Paradise. <laughs> Greek Ephraim Ephraim's artful meditations on the symbols of Christian faith and his stand against heresy made him a popular source of inspiration throughout the church. This occurred to the extent that there is a huge corpus of Ephraim pseudepigraphy and legendary hagiography. Some of these compositions are in verse, often a version of Ephraim's heptosyllabic couplets. Most of these works are considerably later compositions in Greek. Students of Ephraim often refer to this corpus as having a single author called Greek Ephraim or Ephraim Grecus as opposed to the real Ephraim the Syrian. This is not to say that all texts ascribed to Ephraim in Greek are by others, but many are. Although Greek compositions are the main source of pseudepigraphal material, there are also works in Latin, Slavonic and Arabic. There has been very little critical examination of these works, and many are still treasured by some churches as authentic. The best known of these writings is the Prayer of St. Ephraim, which is recited at every service during Great Lent and other fasting periods in Eastern Christianity. <inaudible> <inaudible> Veneration as a saint Soon after Ephraim's death, legendary accounts of his life began to circulate. One of the earlier modifications is the statement that Ephraim's father was a pagan priest of Abnal or Abazal. However, internal evidence from his authentic writings suggest that he was raised by Christian parents. The second legend attached to Ephraim is that he was a monk. In Ephraim's day, monasticism was in its infancy in Egypt. He seems to have been a part of the members of the Covenant, a close knit, urban community of Christians that had covenanted themselves to service and had refrained from sexual activity. Some of the Syriac terms that Ephraim used to describe his community were later used to describe monastic communities, but the assertion that he was monk is anachronistic. Later hagiographers often painted a picture of Ephraim as an extreme ascetic, but the internal evidence of his authentic writings show him to have had a very active role, both within his church community and through witness to those outside of it. Ephraim is venerated as an example of monastic discipline in Eastern Christianity. In the Eastern Orthodox scheme of hagiography, Ephraim is counted as a venerable father i.e., a sainted monk. His feast day is celebrated on 28 January and on the Saturday of the Venerable Fathers Cheesefair Saturday, which is the Saturday before the beginning of Great Lent. Ephraim is popularly believed to have taken legendary journeys. In one of these he visits Basil of Caesarea. This links the Syrian Ephraim with the Cappadocian Fathers and is an important theological bridge between the spiritual view of the two, who held much in common. Ephraim is also supposed to have visited St. Pishoi in the monasteries of Seats in Egypt. As with the legendary visit with Basil, this visit is a theological bridge between the origins of monasticism and its spread throughout the Church. On 5 October 1920, Pope Benedict XV proclaimed Ephraim a doctor of the Church. Doctor of the Syrians. This proclamation was made before critical editions of Ephraim's authentic writings were available. The most popular title for Ephraim is Harp of the Spirit, Syriac, Nur Dry Kenera di Ruha. He is also referred to as the Deacon of Edessa, the son of the Syrians and a pillar of the Church. His Roman Catholic feast day of 9 June conforms to his date of death. For 48 years, 1920 to 1969, it was on 18 June, and this date is still observed in the extraordinary form. Ephraim is honored with a feast day on the liturgical calendar of the Episcopal Church USA on June 10. Topic: Translations. San Ephraim de Nisibis Emnos de Navidad y Epiphania by Ephraim Yildiz Sadik Madrid 2016 in Spanish. ISBN 9788428552356. Sancti Patris Nostri Ephraim Siri Opera Omnia Quae Extant 3 volume, by Peter Ambarak Roma, 1737–1743. Saint Ephraim Hymns on Paradise, translated by Sebastian Brock Crestwood, N.Y., St. Vladimir's Seminary Press, 1990. ISBN 0-88141-076-4. 
Saint Ephraim the Syrian Commentary on Genesis, Commentary on Exodus, Homily on Our Lord, Letter to Publius, translated by Edward G. Matthews, Jr., and Joseph P. Amar. Ed., by Kathleen McVeigh, Washington, D.C., Catholic University of America Press, 1994. ISBN 978-0-8132-1421-4 Saint Ephraim the Syrian The Hymns on Faith, translated by Jeffrey Wicks, Washington, D.C., Catholic University of America Press, 2015. ISBN 978-0-8132-2735-1 Ephraim the Syrian Hymns, introduced by John Mayendorf, translated by Kathleen E. McVeigh, New York, Paulist Press, 1989. ISBN 0-8091-3093-9 See also Syriac Christianity Prayer of Saint Ephraim Codex Ephraimi Rescriptus Notes References Beau Manser, Tineos La Pensée Symbolique de Saint Ephraim le Syrien. Caslic, Lebanon, Bibliothèque de l'Université Saint-Esprit 16. Brock, Sebastian The Luminous Eye, The Spiritual World Vision of Saint Ephraim Rev. ed. Kalamazoo, Mish, Cistercian Publications. ISBN 0-87907-624-0. Beeson, Keyes Den Simple and Bold, Ephraim's Art of Symbolic Thought 1. Gorgeous Press ed. Piscataway, N.J., Gorgeous Press. ISBN 1-59333-397-8. Den Beeson, Keyes 2011. Annotated Bibliography of Ephraim the Syrian. Lulu.com. Griffith, Sidney H. 1997. Faith Adoring the Mystery. Reading the Bible with Saint Ephraim the Syrian online AUSG, ed. Milwaukee, Wisconsin, Marquette Univ. Press. ISBN 0-87462-577-7. Morakian, Mark Winter 2007. HYMs Against Heresies, Comments on Saint Ephraim the Syrian. Sophia. 17 2. ISSN 0194-7958. Ken Perry, David Melling Editors 1999. The Blackwell Dictionary of Eastern Christianity. Malden, M.A., Blackwell Publishing. ISBN 0-631-23203-6, CS1 maint, Extra Text, Authors List link. Nabil L. Cowrie, Die Interpretation der Welt Bei Ephraim dem Sirer. Betrag zur Geistesgeschichte, Tübinger Theologische Studien, BD.6. Mainz 1976. Topic. External links Margonitho, More Ephraim the Syrian Anastasis article Hugoi, Influence of Saint Ephraim the Syrian, Part 1 Hugoi, Influence of Saint Ephraim the Syrian, Part 2 Encyclopædia Britannica 1911, Ephraim Cyrus Saint Ephraim, Faith Adoring the Mystery Archived from the original on 13 June 2008. Benedict XVI on Saint. Ephraim and his role in history.